Brought to you by Capital Partners, a full-service lobbying and public relations firm here to remind the good folks of Southeasteros to be prepared, because session is coming. The Swamp King's Great Hall is alive with the sounds of feasting and merriment. It is a time of thanksgiving. The fire roars and crackles, and smells of gumbo and jambalaya waft through the air. Following the defeat of the Crimson Emperor, the Kingdom of Louisiana is enjoying success not known for many a year, when the cast iron throne rules Southeast Rose once again. Seated at the Swamp King's table are his most trusted friends and advisors, Lady Rivers, the Art Father, Arch Maester Hanagriff, the Kingmaker, and the Binder. As the Art Father regales the table with another one of his ribald tales, the Swamp King senses it is time to talk business before the group gets too deep in their cups. And that's what they call a sea job! <laughs> The Swamp King stands at the head of the table and raises his glass. My friends, how it warms my heart to see us all here, together, victorious, to Louisiana! To Louisiana! We sit at the dawn of a new age. We have driven the Crimson Emperor from his throne and freed the lands from his evil. And none of it would have been possible without every single one of you. To the small council! The, the small, small council. council! Now, although we have scored many great victories, our journey is not yet over. Kingmaker, what are the latest reports concerning Lord Sabin? King, my contacts have told me that the Emperor's forces are in shambles. They continue their journey northward as they seek refuge in the land of the Buckeye. In fact, just today, Lady Rivers brought some interesting news from Starkville. Your Grace, it would appear that while traveling through the lands of Starkville, the remnants of the Tide were set upon by a roving band of Bulldogs. And reports are that Lord Commander Tungavaloa was gravely wounded in the fighting. Hmm. Well, I crave the ultimate defeat of the Crimson Emperor, Satua is an honorable man and a fine soldier, and I wish him a full recovery. A man of his stature deserves to meet his fate on the battlefield, not on a maester's table. Now, Archmaster Hanagriff, you have sent ducks to the corners of Southeasteros, informing the major houses of our rule. What say them? Well, Your Grace, it would appear that while most are willing to bend the knee, not everyone is cooperating. As is common in times of transition, there are those that would seek to increase their own standing. In fact, two of Lord Saban's former lieutenants, Jimbo the Fisher and Kirby the Dum Dum, have refused to bend the knee. The Fisher has laid claim to Texas, as Lord Herman continues to mouth kiss his army into irrelevance. Whilst Lord Dum Dum has laid claim to the entirety of the East, following the defeat of Lord Mullen and Lord Maltzon. The latter due to Commander Nix's ability to miss every single opportunity to strike a blow, or at the very least, cover the spread. Archmeister, I told you about laying that chalk, you chump. Don't you listen to me? Ever? They will learn their place, and they will bend the knee. But let us not dwell on the future, for today is a day of thanks. Remember today, my counsel, for today, life is good. Hear, hear! Now, Artfather, what exactly is a Z-job? Your Grace, if you gotta ask, you can't afford it. <laughs> a cold, moonless night has settled upon the Kingdom of Louisiana. The Swamp King lies in his bed, snoring contentedly. His room shrouded in darkness, save for a flickering candle at his bedside. Suddenly, a shadow flits across the Swamp King's sleeping face. A click and a creak. 
And the Swamp King's stained glass window swings open. A dark figure silently hauls himself over the ledge and into the Swamp King's room, landing in a soundless crouch. Dressed in all black, with his shoes padded and face hooded, the figure slowly creeps across the room, keeping to the shadows wherever possible. As the dark figure draws near to the king's bed, he reaches into his black leather tunic and produces a foot-long razor-sharp Oxfordian steel dagger. The deadly blade flashes menacingly in the candlelight as the assassin raises it high over his head, ready to plunge it deep into the Swamp King's heart. Die! The assassin brings down his blade with all his might. At the last moment, the blade is turned aside. A tussle ensues. <laughs> And a few moments later, the hooded, would-be assassin lies dead on the floor in a growing pool of crimson blood. Lord Commander Burrow stands over the figure, grimacing and wiping blood from his blade. What the fuck is going on here? Your Grace, it would appear that our enemies have resorted to more nefarious means of ending our campaign. They sought to assassinate you in your sleep. Who would resort to such base means as assassination? Let us find out. Lord Commander Burrow bends down and rips off the mask of the would-be assassin. It is none other than the young knight of Oxford, John Rice Plumley. Plumley? But why? If I were to venture a guess, Your Grace, I assume he is doing it on behalf of the Crimson Emperor. He has had firm control of the rebel Black Bear Land Sharks ever since last year's burning of the Oxfjord. Even in defeat, Lord Sabin's treachery knows no limits. And what about defenses? Where were they? Bring me Commander Aranda! Right away, Your Grace. A few minutes later, Commander Randa bursts through the door. Your Grace. Shut up! Listen! Complacency is a sign of weakness in the ranks! The Cast Iron Throne compensates you very well to ensure that not only is Death Valley safe from foreign invaders, but to carry the legacy of the ferocious tiger defenses of yesteryear! You carry with you an obligation to bring the fight to the opposition, not to allow them to nearly kill me in my own chamber! Listen close, Commander Aranda. We now garner the full attention of the committee. The committee now controls the fate of our kingdom, and any foreseen weakness will be magnified and used against us. You are the gatekeeper! Lord Commander Burrow cannot do it all! We need Fulton, Stingley, Lawrence, Fahoko, Phillips, Queen, Tessal to lock the gates! And I don't care who it is! I don't care if it's those hapless, swine-sucking pig farmers from Arkansas! Jimbo and those yell practice! Cult weirdos from ALM or Kirby Dum Dum and his 2009 plus miles terrible offense. They will bend the knee. Go Tigers! The Bench with Jordi Collada and T-Bob Hebert, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria.